Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey and today we are going to be speaking about Trembolone side effects. So this is the last part of a four part series. In the first three parts we spoke about prolactin, cortisol and the thyroid. In this part we are going to be speaking about Trembolone and its effect on the brain. More specifically we're going to be speaking about dopamine. So as with the previous videos, you have to know that Trembolone is a progestin receptor agonist and it works similarly to progesterone. It doesn't increase progesterone per se, although we don't have studies to prove this effect, but it works similarly to it. And with this in mind, progesterone itself stimulates or increases dopamine levels. And with the increase in dopamine levels, we have the decrease in prolactin, which I spoke about, but not only that, dopamine at uncontrolled high levels precipitates aggression, mania, and other psychotic conditions. That is why dopamine antagonists or antipsychotics are used to treat conditions like schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, schizoaffective disorder, and essentially all forms of psychosis. And that is because dopamine is one of the main precipitants of psychosis. So this trend psychosis is technically a type of psychosis. This is why you get the trend rush, as well as the increased aggression and almost psychotic behavior. While some might appreciate the side effect, it doesn't come without its risks. The risks particularly pertain to dopamine, and that's because dopamine itself is quite neurotoxic. It is quite well known that the longer a patient is psychotic, the more damage is occurring to the brain. That's why intervening with antipsychotics is paramount to the treatment of psychosis. Furthermore, with the addition of something like cabagoline or pramiprexil, this will stimulate the dopamine receptor, as they are agonists. However, there are only a few documented cases of mania precipitated by these agents. And it might be assumed that dopamine levels might decrease because these dopamine agonists stimulate the receptor and therefore there is negative feedback. But you must remember that the dopamine production isn't necessarily endogenous in this case. The trembolone is exogenous and since it isn't regulated by any form of feedback, it is just regulated by yourself injecting the steroid, there is no negative feedback at play here. So you would still have high dopamine levels as well as a dopamine agonist. Now there aren't any studies to show how dangerous this could be and it might not be that dangerous. This is all hypothetical, and I'm just trying to usher caution when it comes to the use of Trembolone, specifically the use of Trembolone with cabagoline. Now, as we've established, high levels of circulating dopamine kind of explain the change in behavior in individuals using TREN, but it might have further long-term consequences, such as the neurotoxicity I mentioned. Now, some may mention in the comments that they've been using TREN for many years and they feel fine. You might be fine with high levels of circulating dopamine. It doesn't mean you will suffer the consequences, but as we like to say, you're fine until you're not. And that's because a lot of psychotic patients might be fine functionally for many years with untreated psychosis, but eventually down the line they are in a permanent state of psychosis with fixed delusions, and then it becomes treatment resistant or they just have neurocognitive disorders. Now I'm not saying trend will definitely cause these disorders, but I'm all about caution and trying to prevent these things from happening as we don't have the long-term data. So it's just important to be aware of. I'm not trying to act like a parent here and tell you what to do and what not to do. That is all up to you. I'm just here to give you information. So not only is the dopamine quite toxic, but as we mentioned in the previous video, there might be an overproduction of ACTH and ACTH itself is also quite neurotoxic, as it actually stimulates cytotoxic cells within the brain and can result in astrocyte damage, which is essentially important in supporting neurons in the brain. But again, this is also hypothetical. Then we move on to the topic of TREN in Alzheimer's and beta amyloid accumulation. I've made a video on this when I first started out YouTube, and you can watch it 
if you'd like to, but essentially it was a study done in rats and the results are quite interesting, however not conclusive. And if I'm to draw on some anecdotal evidences, there's a paucity in the literature with regards to treating these psychotic effects of Trembolone. I have in fact had to prescribe antipsychotics in some individuals using Trembolone who were not willing to give up Trembolone due to the fact that they relied on it for what, their career or some other important part of their life. And with the addition of an antipsychotic, these do come with many risks, mostly metabolic, so it increases cholesterol levels, as well as increases your prolactin levels and causes weight gain. But with a low dose antipsychotic, sometimes the side effects of Trembolone, particularly on sleep, are abated. So the use of something like quetiapine at a very low dose of 25 milligrams at night might be able to help one sleep. I'm in the process of editing a podcast that I did with a friend of mine who's also a medical doctor and we speak about the importance of sleep when using steroids and just sleep in general. And since it's well known that when using Trembolone sleep is disturbed, which could be hypothesized through the fact that it increases T3 and T4, but not only that, it decreases TRH, which is also important in the maintenance of the circadian rhythm. And this disturbance in sleep leads to more issues such as high risk for cardiovascular disease, stroke, and other comorbidities. So again, I'm not not suggesting you use antipsychotics, however, I have had to implement them in some cases and they do seem to work. But again, we need more literature when it comes to prescribing antipsychotics as they do come with their risks. This essentially wraps up the whole discussion on Trembolone and its effect on hormones in your body. Let me know what you think about this short mini-series, what you learned from it, what you didn't learn, whether you liked it or didn't, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.